Hello, my name is Leslie Atherton and this is a short story I've written called The Casting Couch. Imagine a casting couch for writers. You might be able to imagine it, but I don't need to. For the last few minutes, I have been living it. Once he'd sat me down, he'd begun with the sleaze. Hello, my dear. Do relax. It's apparent that your imagination is truly, truly beautiful. Let's just remove that jacket so we can see. Oh, your punctuation is showing you little minx. There was no wit and no charm. Oh, I shivered as I removed my jacket and it wasn't because this tiny basement meeting room was cold. Um, I'm here with the first draft manuscript for my third novel. I've worked on the edits that Jane Kennedy sent through. I thought I'd be meeting her today. Ah, oh, She hasn't arrived back yet, but she's trusted me with the delicate job of seeing to you. I'm sorry, what do you mean? I think you know what I mean, young lady. Look, I can make it nice for you. If you make it nice for me, I see to you, you see to me. And so on, ad infinitum, sordid and seedy and salacious, alliteration personified. Alexander Cornfield was his name, a name that sounds innocent enough. Alexander is a name that speaks of decency, power and reliability. Cornfield presents images of sun-drenched, mile-long American maize plantations. This man did not suit his name. I'd been staring at the backs of my hands as he babbled in a feeble impersonation of flirting, but now looked over at Alex. I'd met him a few times previously when he'd hovered behind Jane Kennedy's desk, waiting for approval for one of his ludicrous new book proposals, or, more likely, to eavesdrop on our conversation, while attempting to get a glimpse down my blouse. Jane's attitude towards him was, just ignore the moron. But mine had been, from the moment I first laid eyes on him, Yuck, keep that repulsive beast away from me. So far I'd managed to avoid any kind of personal contact with him, but today's visit to my publisher's office had been a little bit more last minute than usual. I'd rung Jane early. She told me she had an appointment across the other side of town, but she told me to turn up at 11am and wait in reception for her to arrive. Unfortunately for me... Alex had caught a glimpse of me from the top of the stairs, had virtually skipped down to meet me and had proceeded to lie to me about where he was taking me and why. Alexander Cornfield, bigger than me and far stronger, also, and more scarily, he was in possession of keys to the room he'd locked us both into. Alex was holding all the cards except one. I was far more quick-thinking. As he preened himself and sat next to me, breathing his nasty hot breath over me, I asked myself how a person might escape from a man such as this. Screaming and shouting? Unlikely. He'd brought me to a basement meeting room. There may be people passing sometimes, but I thought it improbable. To me, there seemed to be only one way. Incapacitate him, steal his keys, break out and lock him back in. Perhaps that's extreme. But I was someone going about my own business who had been abducted. He was in the wrong. He deserved to be incapacitated. But there was little furniture, and certainly nothing I could pick up and throw at him. The only piece of furniture was the casting couch itself, an Art Nouveau-style dark wood chaise long, upholstered with burgundy velvet. It was undoubtedly a beautiful piece of antique furniture, but completely unhelpful under my circumstances. So plan B go along with his intended seduction, then capacitate him. It could work. As I sat there evading his lips, it suddenly struck me. How odd. This room had meeting room B imprinted on its door plaque, yet inside it held one piece of furniture only. No meeting table or stackable chairs, no whiteboard or flip chart. Nothing. What's this room all about, Alex? I asked. It's my meeting room, he said. I bring all my writers here. All of them? I questioned. All of them, he said. Some are more willing than others, obviously, but most are like you. They just need a little bit of persuasion. That's it, I said. Just a little persuasion. He grinned with a smile that didn't reach his eyes. I knew it. I always know, he said, as he reached over to stroke my face. More shivers from me as his hands moved down onto my neck and lower. I was just about to move to protest to attach my fist to his face or scream when the door rattled in its frame with a banging of fists. Alex, get out of there. We've got you this time, came a voice I recognised. It was Jane, 
Another voice shouted louder, a man's voice this time. We're coming in, the voice said. You're in big trouble and won't be working here again. Gross misconduct. The security guard sounded pleased at this fact as his keys did their job and opened the door. Jane rushed in to retrieve me from the arms of the monster while the security guard pinned down an arrogant and uncontrite Alex, radioing in a call to his workmates for backup. That's the problem, being an erotic press, said Jane. Some people just make assumptions about what is and what isn't acceptable. Did you notice, she asked, that this was a scenario from your last book, where the heroine gets seduced by the office manager in a downstairs office? On a specially purchased couch, I said. Jane led me out of the room just as the other security guards appeared at the door. He stood it before, Jane said, and it was hushed up, but he won't be doing it again. I took a deep breath and exhaled noisily. Sorry, this is the last book in the Passionate Night series. Somehow I've lost my interest in writing erotic fantasy.